This is Partners in Crime with Adam Croft and Robert Dawes. Well, I'm uh, out of my shed now, Bob. Back out of hiding. Well, you say that, you see, because after last week's wonderful rant, you on your soapbox at your most distinguished and articulate and um, verbose. Uh, I have to say, it's, it's very nice to, to, to see, but it's not quite... Normality hasn't quite returned yet, because I've seen you just trying to f- fiddle about <laughs> with your Bluetooth. And, <laughs> uh, and the, old, the old rage was rising, and I wonder whether that will give sway to yet another important rant on partners in crime it might well do yes i did have a little trouble getting my mouse to work um so i only had my my keyboard and i had to get siri up with that and use siri to try and get the bluetooth to work this all sounds like dialogue for an old carry-on movie (laughs) technology there we go why can't can't we just record this on cassette tape and post it out to all the listeners oh those are the days i can remember you see i can remember when those first came out those old cassette players they were an extraordinary thing it was like the polaroid swinger and as a child in the early 70s you just i couldn't believe it It was a microphone you could hear your voice back and I can remember I used to pretend, do do um, DJing. Mm. You used, you used oh to yeah, yeah. Get those top of the pops records. We had top of the pops records of uh, for, for listeners abroad. Top of the pops was a very famous uh, show uh, showcasing all the, the 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 hit pop songs of the sixties, seventies, eighties, and even into the nineties. I think. And they, they, there was a company that brought out records which were sort of covers for all these songs. So you used to get them. So you had all the latest um, all the latest songs and. You you used to fill in the bit and make your own little sort of breakfast show. Mm. Uh, but as a teenager, of course, it wasn't breakfast. It was more like sort of mid-afternoon <laughs> after you'd crawled out of bed. <laughs> but there we are. So there we are. There's a little bit of nostalgia for those who like to um, well, engulf themselves in such things. Well, the rant did seem to work. Well, did it? Um, well, yeah, well, we had... It um, certainly impressed me. We, we did have some um, some some interaction. From, from listeners off the back of that um, Tracy Tonkinson on YouTube said Adam and Bob thank you for your support of those of us in the indie publishing world I suspect that like the music industry before it the trad publishers are panicking a little that they will be obliterated by indies as you said Adam it's a bit head in sand and a little sad that the festivals and associations are not more welcoming to indie authors and that basically sums up literally um all of the communication that we had was along those lines was, was very supportive and agreeable well, that's nice did we get any response from publishers um or, no or tra- uh, traditionally no, published they... authors at all no? No, no no i mean only only supportive oh, that's um nice. alison waterfield said adam can defend my corner any time that was a damn good discussion on this week's um partners in crime uh, tune in the mystery will be revealed etc etc um dharma kelleher said love your latest episode talking about indie authors my first two books were pubbed by one of the big five i then opted to go indie because i was doing most of the marketing anyway uh, which is something we hear all the time from um from traditionally published authors well, that's that's very good. So, who needs Brexit when you've got Croft on his soapbox? That's what it comes down to. And uh, good. It, it was it was a good week for for interaction. I also managed to get the partners in crime emails working again, ah. um, and realised actually we had quite a few um, God, emails from people over the last few weeks, which we hadn't been able to see. Um, Hello to Amber Rush, who emailed us a couple of weeks ago, actually, saying, absolutely love your podcast. Been listening to it from the start and have read all of your books. Don't know what I would do without the recommendations and the most amazing Kobo discount codes. Hope Bob enjoys Oxford. It's a beautiful place to live in. Hope you both enjoy Amstel Literary Festival. Would have loved to have been able to go, but doing an event with the police. Oh, Amber. Oh. Uh, thank you very much, Amber. How nice. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's lovely of you to... And we hope to, you get released like soon. It. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Amber Rush, right. That's a great yes, name, isn't it? it, it oh, that it sounds is. like a, a novelist name anyway. Should be, yeah. The new best-selling novel by Amber Rush. <laughs> Rosemary Valdez um, said, Adam and Bob, we are watching here on Netflix The Fool, one of the most dark, frightening crime psychological thrillers we've ever watched. I highly recommend this, but it's definitely not for the faint of heart. You've probably seen it in the UK uh, back in 2016 yes. or so. 
D.S. Gibson, uh, Gillian Anderson, is called into Belfast to help solve a notorious serial killer, played by Jamie Dornan, and takes you through the lives he has slow dis- slowly destroyed from the victims, their families, and the police themselves. I understand it won an Edgar Award. But yes, I can only watch in small bursts because it is so dark. Great acting from all the actors. Yes, that's a very good recommendation. That uh, that got very well received uh, yeah. over here. And uh, now, obviously, thank you very much, Rosemary, worldwide. Yes, that's uh, Netflix The Fool. Thank you to Rosemary Valdez for that um, David Lum got in touch a couple of times um, hadn't understood neither had we that our emails weren't working and wondered why, why we hadn't read out any of his messages um, he we talked about the Amptill mystery a couple of weeks ago and last week mentioned that that was um, to do with the book Masquerade um, which David guessed well done David and also had an extra guess that it might stem from King Henry VIII's wife Catherine of Aragon whose crown is buried on the uh, Ant Hill, which became Ant Hill, apparently. It did. That's because we are on a, sa- a green sand ridge. Yeah. There we are. We're, we're, all our houses are built on sand. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. It's true. <laughs> um, so, yes, David um, got in touch a couple of times. He said also that he loves listening to our good selves, wittering on and occasionally talking crime fiction. And he thinks the CWA should be open to independent authors and not just the big names. Oh, well, wow, um, So, yes, completely in agreement with you there, What's David. What's that one at the top? Um, we'll get on that in a minute. One by one, hang on. I'm getting patience now. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got the full Star Trek Enterprise um, board in front of him now, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, uh, yes, God, there quite a lot, aren't there? We also heard from Maria Simons, who um, you very kindly and unexpectedly gave a mug away to. On uh, last week's show Well no I gave it In full knowledge Of what I was doing And it was very well deserved Marie. <laughs> She said Hi Adam and Bob I'm thrilled to be a winner Of a much sought after Fabulous Partners in Crime mug Especially as I'm Very new to crime reading So new in fact I've wed I, I've wed Willis Wodger I've, <laughs> I've read One crime novel that is thanks to you two. I found your found. Oh yeah, I'm doing good today, aren't I? Yeah, that's I'm it. Doing it brilliantly. That's it. You've got to get that denture. More green just, tea just needed. Just in the right place, otherwise <laughs> it really doesn't work. Maria says, I found your podcast on YouTube a few months ago and gave it a listen as I was toying with trying a crime novel and you inspired me. My sister had passed one of them on to me from another local author and found surprisingly that I enjoyed it. I've since purchased one of yours, Adam. Tell me I'm wrong and look forward to reading it while sipping tea from my authentic Partners in Crime mug. And then I'll purchase one of Bob's. So you see, Adam, your tenor may get back to you in dribs and drabs of royalties. Yes, my my book's called, you know, uh, You Were Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh, that's very How nice. That's that? very positive, Maria. And somebody's first crime book they well, buy is That's quite is exciting, money. isn't it? Yeah. That someone's got the whole of the genre. The choice yeah. of everything, starting from the beginning. I mean, what a, what, a, what a great journey. We hope that's going to be for you. Yes. Yeah, it's... Um, it's an exciting time, yeah, isn't it, it to, to be is. discovering crime fiction. Um, and yes, the, the one at the top was, um, they, they want to send us a, a book. So, Oh, right. Okay, fine. Okay. Yes, happy, happy to receive a book. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll do that. Um, so yeah, we I, I just discovered all of those, those emails sitting there and thought I, I probably should read them out. And I've got it working now, so please do get in touch if you want to. We're hello at partnersincrime.online and we will read it out, even if it's rude. <laughs> especially especially if, if it's, rude. it's rude straight to the front of the queue right you've read a book yeah yeah it was a few years back now but I um, really enjoyed it <laughs> yes. well these are the delights of, of new father fatherhood you see you realise there is no time for the old luxurious habits of sort of having a, a, mm. an afternoon just just reading I have to lock myself in the bath or go out in the garden lock the back door so they can't get out and chase me well I prefer the second image to the first <laughs> Um, I've started reading, literally started, having read the first chapter so far. Um, a sentiment. Yeah, I really am doing well with my tongue today. A sentimental traitor by Michael Dobbs. Um, it's an explosive thriller. It's it, it's labelled as, and it certainly is. The the, the first chapter opens with um, a plane being blown out of the sky over London and Ooh. killing everybody on board including school children so it, it's a, a hell of an opening to a book um, well written very thrilling so far as I say only one chapter in so I can't say too much so far but um, here's the uh, the blurb off the back that should waste a minute or two shouldn't it a missile tears a passenger plane from the skies over London everyone on board is killed including 37 exceptional children who could have killed them and why 
When Harry Jones starts searching for the answers, he stumbles onto a plot that stretches from Russia to the Islamic Revolution in Egypt, from the shores of the Caspian Sea to an ancient church in rural Wiltshire. Yet everything leads back to the secretive corners of the European Union capital of Brussels and a British woman named Patricia Vane. She and Harry are destined to fight their battle to the death, for this is a conspiracy to take over the whole of the European Union and the plotters will win unless Harry Jones can stop them. But in order to succeed, he must first survive, and everything is stacked against him, even his closest friends. Wow. Well, Mr Dobbs is, uh, uh, he knows of what he writes, doesn't he, really? Mm. I mean, he's an ex-politician, isn't he? Uh, and the creator, so, yeah. well, he wrote House of Cards, uh, which was originally, mm. uh, was a best-selling uh, uh, novel, obviously, and series of, of books turned into the television programmes, both mm. in the UK and, of course, as we know now, in in the States, um, and, and, and a brilliant thriller writer. Yes, yeah, he's not um, an author I'd read before or that I was massively familiar with. Um, it just seems to be a bit of a change for me from the usual kind of mystery or police procedural side of things to read something on the action front. Um, it, is, it is something I've been I've been looking at. Um, I've got perhaps a little something up my sleeve on that front. I'll, I'll oh. talk about in in coming weeks. Um, so yeah, really really enjoying the pace of that, and um, oh. yeah, really really enjoyable book. I'd look look. For Forward to seeing your fast-paced ideas hidden up your sleeve. So, <laughs> There's anyway. nothing fast-paced about me at the moment. Oh, no, no, matron. Right, um, now this week is... Uh, now this is the, uh, breaking news uh, for, well, hopefully for listeners around the world. Uh, it's the longest for the Thigston's Old Peculiar Crime uh, uh, Festival. A novel of the year. This is the Old Peculiar Crime Novel of the Year. And they've announced their long list. Now, people who don't know uh, about Thixton's, it is the, the probably the premier um, crime brewery. <laughs> it's a, it's a, <laughs> they brew a fine beer, it has to be said. But they sponsor uh, probably the premier um, crime fiction uh, festival in the country, which is held every year uh, in uh, in Yorkshire, in Harrogate, the wonderful spa town of Harrogate. Uh, and it's a great place to visit. Um, and uh, There's some really uh, good pubs. Yeah, some smashing pubs and some excellent some crime fiction festivals. So uh, another long listed for the uh, man booker is up against debut authors in the most hotly contended crime writing prize in the country, Thixton's tell us. 2019 marks the 15th year of the 15th, my goodness me, of the Thixton Old Peculiar Crime Novel of the Year Award. The prize was created to celebrate the very best in crime fiction and is open to UK and Irish crime authors whose novels were published in paperback from the 1st of May 2018 to the 3rd of April 2019 and I'm delighted to say you're not uh, on it are you? Uh, no <laughs> <laughs> no I was going to say they're scraping no. the barrel this year no I was quite I was, I, I was you, you got me on an upward thrust there and all of a sudden <laughs> I've gone tumbling down again no I'm not on it but I am delighted to say that many of the uh, mm. books and authors that we have recommended on Partners in Crime over the last year Ah, which mm. is very, very nice. Ahead uh, of the curve, as usual. Well, we try to have our finger on the pulse um, when you haven't got a fast-paced uh, crime fiction idea up your sleeve. <laughs> uh, so they include Snap by Belinda Bauer, which we reviewed uh, not long ago. Terrific book. Uh, our House uh, by Louise Candlish, which mm. uh, Partners in Crime reviews as well. Uh, we love that. And a favourite of yours over the last year, 13 by Steve Kavanagh. Mm. Mm. Uh, Remember that? You were very yes, excited about certainly that. Certainly do, yeah. Uh, a fantastic conceit and brilliantly executed as you would imagine. We also have uh, Do the whole list. Can I, do I, the whole I, list. I will do actually. I'm just picking out our favourites. Oh, the okay. one, yeah. the one, not our favourites, uh, the ones that we, the ones uh, that we got, got around to reading. Uh, the wonderful Ellie Griffiths, a friend yeah. of partners in crime indeed, uh, is on the list quite rightly for the Dark Angel uh, in her another wonderful novel in her Galloway and Nelson uh, series. And in this way, in this one, Galloway goes to Rome. It's a great read. Um, a personal favourite of mine, uh, Mick Heron, London Rules, spy fiction, uh, is uh, at its best in uh, Mick Heron's uh, books and lovers of the Slough, ha Slough, Slough House. 
uh, in intelligence uh, service books uh, will uh, already know that what a great read that is. And what list could be, uh, could exist without the uh, name of a Val McDermott mm. in it? And of course, uh, her latest DCI Karen Piri uh, book, uh, Broken Ground, is quite rightly on the list. Another friend of the show. And another great friend of the, sh- of the show. Uh, uh, who else have we got? Uh, recently reviewed books by you, Seven Deaths of e- Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Brilliant The book. Country House Murder Mystery Deconstructed mm. to Brilliant uh, mm. Effect. Um, a favourite of mine this year, Sarah Vaughan's Anatomy of a Scandal, uh, Westminster Scandal Thriller at its very best. Uh, brilliantly executed by uh, Sarah Vaughan and I am particularly pleased to see uh, uh, my friend uh, the marvellous Kate Rhodes has her Hell Bay uh, mm. D.I. Ben Quito uh, novel set uh, in the beautifully described in uh, Kate's hands the Silly Isles another friend of the show yes so I mean that's absolutely terrific isn't it mm. now the executive director of um, Thixton, Simon Thixton, uh, do you see what he did there? Uh, <laughs> has said so many Where authors... Where did he get that name from? I don't know. So many authors on our long list have been nominees for major mainstream awards. The literary world is perhaps catching up to the fact that crime fiction is leading the publishing world and shaping our cultural landscape. In 2018, sales of crime novels outstrip general fiction for the first time. It's a genre that dominates the small and big screen and attracts critical acclaim as well as being in incredibly popular. There is, however, only one crime novel of the year, and the reputation of the Thixton's Award, built over 15 years, makes this accolade hotly contended. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, indeed it is, indeed it will be. Yes, it's, it's a cracking list. Shall I do it? Yeah, off you go. The long list in full Pop is... Pop is... Da, 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 da. You know, number da, 25 da, this da, week, da, da, it's Snap by Belinda Bauer. Um, Our House by Louise Candler. 13 by Steve Kavanagh, in at number 13. Uh, Wildfire by Anne Cleves. This is How It Ends by Eva Dolan. Take Me In by Sabine Durant. That's in at number 27 this week. Need a coffee. The Dark Angel by Ellie Griffiths. <laughs> London Rules by Mick Heron Broken Ground by Val McDermott <laughs> The Quaker by Liam McIlvany um, The Way of All Flesh by Ambrose Parry East of Hounslow by Karam Rahman Hell Bay by Kate Rhodes Salt Lane by William Shaw The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor which is on my list I have to read that The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton uh, Anatomy of a Scandal by Sarah Vaughan and Changeling by Matt Veselovsky well, we've got some reading to do to actually complete uh, that list, haven't we? Because there we are have. a few that we have uh, missed out. And one of them I've uh, picked up this week, um, and you've just mentioned it. It's a book that's been mm-hmm. long-listed there called East of Hounslow by Callum uh, Rahman. It's shortlisted for the CWA John Cre- He was shortlisted for the CWA John Creasy uh, Dagger Award 2018 and the Crime Fest Last Laugh Award 2018. Um, uh, it's a Telegraph Book of the Year. Uh, and this is what it says about it. Meet Jay, small-time dealer, accidental jihadist, the one man who can save us all. Javid, call him Jay, is a dope dealer living in West London. He goes to mosque on Friday, and he's just bought his pride and joy, a BMW. He lives with his mum, and life seems sweet. But his world is about to turn upside down, because MI5 have been watching him, and they think he's just the man they need for a delicate mission. One thing's for sure, now he's a long way east of Hounslow, Jay's life will never be the same again. With the edgy humour of Four Lions and the pulse-racing tension of Nomad, East of Hounslow is the first in a series of thrillers starring Jay Kazim. Uh, so um, uh, so that uh, looks like a great read. I mm. have just ordered it on... Oh, who did I use to order this book with a 40% discount? I'm trying to remember. What well, would have made sense is to order it from Kobo.com. Oh, thank you. Rescued, rescued, rescued. <laughs> um, if you've enjoyed any of the books we've talked about today, or sound like you might enjoy them, um, East of Hounslow by um, Kuram Rahman, and the one I spoke about earlier, the A Sentimental Traitor by Michael Dobbs, or just any other book you want to buy, you can use your exclusive Partners in Crime discount code. Um, if you're an existing 
using, uh, user of the Partners in Crime discount code. If you've been using it for a while, then the one you want to use is the promo code PARTNERS, which will give you 40% off of all of your future ebook purchases for life. So please do use that heavily. Um, if you're a new listener to Partners in Crime, or if you've not yet claimed your discount, um, then use the promo code CRIME at the checkout and you'll get 90% off of your first ebook purchase. You don't need an e-reader, by the way. You don't need to have a digital fancy do whatever you're listening to us on now. <laughs> Actually, I can say that. <laughs> well, I, you, I can't, you say that. <laughs> I can't get normal words out, but I can say that. Um, you can listen. To, uh, if you're listening to this, you can read the book on any device. You can read it on your phone, on your tablet, or, or on your e-reader. If you want to buy one of Kobo's wonderful e-reader devices, I have two, and they are brilliant. Um, so yes, promo code CRIME at the checkout to claim 90% off your first e-book purchase. And moving forward, use the promo code PARTNERS to get 40% off of all of your e-books for life. That's Marvellous. Very, very kind offer, isn't it? From, it is. At Kobo. It is, and, and, and I have to say, a very useful one. A very useful one, <laughs> indeed, yes. I, you know, I've still not used it. You are kidding. I can't bring myself to use it. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I just feel a bit uh, odd using the, the, the promo code that I helped negotiate. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> yes, it's not for us, it's for our listeners. Well, you That's can interesting. It. If I was your therapist, I'd actually, I'd actually sort of be investigating that a little in a little more depth. Oh, it's quite a. What do you think might come of that? I don't know. Something to do with your wadgery do or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no idea. I've got, well, I've got a wonky wadgery do. That's what I, I'm doing. I can honestly say because I didn't negotiate it. Uh, <laughs> I just use it, and uh, and and very nice it is too. Because the fact is, uh, with the discount, you go, oh dear, it's forty percent. The money goes to the authors in the first place. Oh yes, yeah. all the money goes to the authors in the first place, and also because it's such a good offer, you find yourself downloading more books yeah uh reading more books and so i mean this is obviously the commercial thinking behind kobo um uh, uh an, organiza- an organization full of, of of wisdom and uh and it, and it works for me mm. anyway so can i recommend a discount promotion on kobo to you adam because i think you benefit from actually <laughs> taking part in it well yes and i must say that um it's a good point you make actually that um the discount does not affect the authors whose books you're buying no. at all. Kobo um, take the hit on that completely. So the author will still get the, the same royalty whether you buy the book at full price or whether you use your promo code. So, um, yeah, please, please do use it. It helps Kobo see the uh, success of Partners in Crime as well, for how many people claim that. So, um, yes, all very, very good points. So going back to that list, I mean, I'm just saying, obviously, East of Hounslow is, is, is my next book um, uh, to read. But there's some, you know, you've got Anne Cleves there. Yeah. You've got uh, Sabine Durant, uh, Take Me In, mm. uh, which I've, I've yet to read. But uh, people, friends of mine who uh, do read um, Sabine's books say they're terrific psychological thrillers. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the list goes on and on. You've mentioned uh, C.J. Tudor's The Chalk Man, which uh, is uh, incredibly popular and uh, and a bestseller. And William Shaw's Salt Lane, Eva Dolan, uh, This Is How It Ends. I mean, yeah. these are all fantastic books that are new to me so I feel a bit like Mar- Maria who wrote into us a little earlier <laughs> you know even though you've just read one crime novel and I've read hundreds upon hundreds of, of crime novels over the year I still get excited about the prospect of my next one well talking of getting excited about the prospect of the next one we're now 23 minutes into uh, this episode of Partners in Crime and we've yet to mention Line of Duty well, that's it. Which We've I've just, just done now. Stop the clock. Um, <laughs> yes, we <laughs> couldn't, you couldn't wait that. any longer. Well, yes. Uh, what, um, what are your thoughts without giving the plot away? Well, I have caught up. So I think we're, what, three episodes in now? Yes, we're, we're, and, we're uh, even Stevens now. We're episode four th- coming Sunday night. Um, yeah, it, it's twisty, it's turny, it's uh, in-depth. It harks back to previous series, although I must say you don't need to watch the previous series to uh, to get full appreciation of this, the fifth. But I'm really, really enjoying it still. It's it seems to kind you of You sound surprised. No, not in the slightest. You said with a sibilant S. I am I am pleasantly surprised that five series into a show it still has not relented and it is still as fresh. thrilling and fresh as as ever. Even though as I say they're going back to you know, making reference to things that happened in the first series. 
Um, and as we now know, this isn't going to be the last series. No. So, uh, obviously, but uh, uh, Jet Mercurio did announce uh, this week that the next series would be the last. Mm. So, um, if he's beginning to clean up the larder uh, in this series, um, uh, goodness knows what is going to happen in the very last series, because he, he, he loves tying things up eventually and make, making you go, well, all crime writers may go, oh, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Mm. I didn't mm. see that coming. You know, the, 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 the essential surprise which is an essential ingredient on all uh, thrillers and, and comedy he does know. throw a good curveball he certainly I'm does say that and does. as we said in last week's episode and this is an area which I sort of have some expertise in I suppose I mean the ensemble acting is of such a high standard mm. uh, that it's it's, it, it's wonderful to see yeah. you know there's so much trust and, and generosity on screen and, and everyone taking their moment and, and this year's um, guest you know Stephen Graham is I think one of the, the hottest actors in the world actually mm. I think he's it's quite sensational has long been appreciated uh, in the UK um, mm, mm. As, a, as, a, as a great act in actual fact I say that in the UK and I think in America I'm sure he was in Broadwalk um, oh god what was that wonderful series um, everyone's shouting at the. Well, uh, 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 I've uh, got yeah, a clue what you're talking no, about. He played Al Capone. Oh, did he? Yes. Uh, in, in a series what, of. A scouse there. Al Capone. Uh, no, no, he's incredibly versatile. <laughs> anyway, show we me a scouse. We saw that on this week's. We show me his... a scouser that can't do a good American accent. Well, we saw a... his London accent on this week's episode, didn't yeah. we? Oh, it's good. Mm. I mean, he's good. He, and he's, uh, he's terrific. And uh, so, and uh, Adrian Dunbar, and the rest of the I mean, the whole crew are uh, uh, cool, yeah. Uh, and it's. I think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a superb series and we'll keep you tuned there must be people around the world listening to this and say oh my god they're going on about it again and we can't even see it uh, you can it's on Netflix I don't know if series 5 is yet but, oh um, series 5 isn't yeah but, uh, probably BBC Worldwide you can probably find it um, somewhere around okay. there but yeah do hunt it down because I take it's, back it's that apology uh, if you're not watching it you're mad <laughs> But do let us know what you have been watching, what you have been reading and, and listening to. Um, you know, we read out a few emails from people there who were given out their their recommendations of, of what they've been watching and reading. We do love to hear what's, um, you know, not just what we found ourselves, but, um, you know, pass on your recommendations. Let us know what you've been watching, what you've been reading. Uh, you can email us hello at partnersincrime.online. That's probably the safest option because I tend to lose tweets and, and Facebook messages. Well, I mean, I've... I've evidence of that today but you find them again eventually weeks eventually, later yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. quite nice to, to to get back but yeah again we always say this but thanks very much for emailing us mm. uh, with your thoughts and suggestions and whatever they do make a difference and we, we fully appreciate that uh, it and uh, it makes us feel a little less alone here in a, yeah. it's not little, nice to know somebody's studio. listening exactly still. yeah <laughs> 61 episodes in and they're still growing yeah my mum loves it is she yeah really that's her second mention in as many weeks oh wow well, she can sponsor us from that one, can't fact, she? In fact, in fact, she thought she'd won a mug last week. Oh, really? <laughs> she mentioned, have I won a mug? Because uh, Moriarty put up a, a, a wonderful piece. Of, a, a, we were giving a mug away for the mm. um, the, the masquerade, uh, the, the winner of that particular, as we, um, uh, what do we call it? A quiz, challenge, whatever mm. it is. And uh, mum, mum thought she was getting a mug. No. Can I give her a mug? <laughs> Just one. Can give her yours. How much do these mugs cost to actually make? About a tenner a pop. They don't. They do. They, <laughs> including sending them out, yeah. They cost a tenner a pop? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, can I have two then? <laughs> yes. You can, yes. That'd be £30. And a signed widgeridoo. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be nice. <clears throat> so there we have. We've got the Fixons Longest, which is great. Can mm. I just say, if you get the chance to go uh, this summer... Yeah, I do. In July, look it up. It's a it's a great festival. It's set in a, a wonderful hotel uh, uh, in the, the heart of uh, Harrogate. Mm. It was a hotel that Agatha Christie ran away from. So, uh, crime readers around the world, if you're listening to this uh, and didn't know it already, uh, they ha hold the festival uh, in Harrogate for that very reason, because of its provenance. Agatha Christie escaped. No one really knows what was going on in her mm. mind at that time. Why she went uh, but she disappeared was it amnesia was it part of some sophisticated plot was it drugs was it drugs was it the idea of a nice cream tea at Betty's Mind <laughs> you, that probably wasn't open then but um, uh, or that usual warm York 
Yorkshire welcome. Who knows what drew her to that wonderful spa town, but that's where she went, and that's where the Thixton's old peculiar crime fiction festival is held every year, and this year is going to be an absolute belter. So if you haven't got tickets, get them before they've all gone. I think she fancied a pint of IPA at the Harrogate Tap. Who doesn't? Well, I certainly do, that's for sure. Um... I think all that's left to say this week is to um, have a lovely Easter weekend. Yes, the weather's looking good. We like to get back to the weather, as listeners, regular mm. listeners already know. We are looking at temperatures possibly hitting 24 uh, over the Easter weekend, so it's going to be baking. Are you going to put on your um, your barbecue pin here for the first time this yeah, year? Yeah, I'm having a barbecue today. With the tassels and uh, and all, all the mm. rest of it. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, I'm having a barbecue today, which sounds very odd, because obviously it's not actually Friday as I say this, but as you're listening to it on Friday, I'm having a barbecue you today you maybe know, maybe right now if you're listening to it on friday afternoon i'll have a couple of extra bangers please <laughs> it is good friday um and we are of course distinctly average partners in crime was presented by adam croft and robert dawes and produced by adam croft the theme tune was by the caesareans the partners in crime logo and imagery were designed by stuart Bache. partners in crime is sponsored by kobo your favorite local bookshop perfected